We are the Templetons. I'm Ethan and this is Cassidy. Uh, we have a 1994 Bluebird bus. It's got a Cummins 12 valve and an Allison transmission in it. Uh, it was a retired fire bus. Uh, we bought it right off the company and converted it ourselves. It took us about four months to do it. and We've been on the road for about a month and a half. So this is our living room area. Uh, we made this into a sectional couch that pulls out and it's an extra sleeping bed. Uh, we have our fireplace that is also a heater and then we've got our little TV here and this cabinet actually uh, has storage behind it and underneath it as well. So, And the couch actually pulls out into a little bed that flops down and there's enough room for two people when we have friends over. We got plenty of lights for the whole little living area here and the dogs obviously love it. But This actually came out of one of those uh, TV entertainment centers. We just took out the fireplace part of it. Um, it's electric so we only use it when we're plugged in to shore power um, but it does get it pretty hot in here and it's nice for a little ambiance. It's a 1500 watt fireplace. It doesn't draw that many amps but the watts to kick it on means that we can't really run it while we're uh, on uh, solar. The TV is a uh, 110 volt but it doesn't draw that much power and it runs perfectly fine off our inverter. And we really actually don't. We don't use it a lot, it's more for show. <laughs> but we like to be outside hanging out and basically once the sun goes down we're pretty much either ready for bed or gonna crash somewhere else so yeah. Yeah I mean we use it like if we're plugged in at an RV park somewhere they'll have Wi-Fi or something where we can watch a little bit of TV and catch up on some things that we miss but it's about the only time that we use it. We custom made the cushions ourselves and they also slip off. There's a little slip cover so when the dogs get them all dirty we can slip them off and toss them in the washer and yeah, they're all clean again. We made them kind of like a fitted sheet so that they just fit over there really easily and you can throw them in the wash whenever. Really well so far. I mean, yeah. they're pretty dirty dogs and they haven't made them that bad yet for being a month or two on them. So. I think we wish we had a little bit more yeah, open space. This takes up quite a bit of space and being the fact that we don't use it as much because we like to be off grid, this would have been a cool little section for seating too, I think. Mm -hmm. We have her co-pilot seat there that works out pretty well for an extra spot to sit but but yeah all underneath it we have storage for uh, like blankets and other things that we use in the living room uh, and then we actually have storage up in front we put sometimes our motorcycle helmets or another speaker under there and it's nice to get stuff out of the way it's a Honeywell swamp cooler that we bought at Lowe's uh, super cheap you fill it with a gallon of water and it runs for quite a while it's got a swivel mode it's got a timer on it uh, I think it only uses 600 watts so real, really efficient to run off solar and we run it all the time and haven't had an issue with our batteries yet. But works great, highly recommend it. We, we chose to go with the swamp cooler instead of an AC unit because we didn't wanna have to buy a generator and we knew an AC unit, unit wouldn't work on our solar. Right. So we don't wanna be anywhere too hot. So yeah. this it works. Gets, <laughs> it gets too hot, we just pack up and go somewhere else, go to the next place. It got kind of hot, but we're used to like 105, 110 in our hometown, so it's... So this is our kitchen area. Um, we did our countertops with a epoxy resin. Uh, they're from Stone Coat Countertops, and we watched all their instructional videos on YouTube, and uh, pretty simple to do. Uh, it's just a piece of MDF with all the resin and some spray paint into it. Uh, got our little sink. With plenty of room and it also has a cutting board on top that we like to use quite a bit and it adds a lot more uh, counter space. Mm -hmm. And then this is over here is our little breakfast bar that we use when it's somewhat bad weather outside. Usually we eat up on top of the deck which is pretty nice but it's got storage underneath that as well that I did uh, some of my solar stuff is under there and then we just keep extra junk that we have in the in the drawer there. And it doubles as a workstation for oh, me yeah, so I can set my it. laptop up here and have a nice view while mm -hmm. I'm working. We have an unlimited cell phone plan and um, we use the hotspot on that to hook up to internet. Usually when we're out somewhere that doesn't have service it's probably good that it doesn't have service. We're having a good time off of our phones but it's nice to be able to pop back in and have some service and do some work and catch up. So storage in the kitchen, we've got all these drawers here and then we also have cabinets underneath that hold all of our stuff. Um, so we just bought the um, prefab cabinets at Home Depot. So I think this is four separate cabinets. We just stuck them all together and they work perfect. We had to modify a little bit for the stove. We just had to cut out part of the uh, cabinet so we could set our stove in there. 
But other than that, they're just standard cabinets. So we have a hot water heater. Uh, we run 50 gallons of fresh water and 25 gallons of gray water. And I think our water pump is only like, it's one of those sure flow. I think it's like three and a half gallons a minute. So it's really not a lot of water. But um, I think our faucet is rated for like a gallon and a half a minute. A gallon and a half a minute? Something like that. Yeah, but we do dishes and I think we've got our water tanks. If we're conservative, they'll last about 10 days, 12 days. So we've got if our 50. Very conservative. Yeah, <laughs> you got to find some no creeks showers. and lakes to shower in. But 50 gallons in the gray tank is easy enough to dump. So don't have to worry about that much. The stove is a... Suburban. Suburban stove. <laughs> uh, we found it on Amazon and it's just a little stove topper and it's a three burner. It uses propane and I sunk it into the countertop and made it work and it works for us. It does everything we need. We found that we really didn't need an oven that much. We have one of those Dutch ovens and that's really nice to cook in if you have a campfire. Uh, yeah. So, and we also have an instant pot, the instant pot um, is nice. a toaster, and a Nutribullet. So, I mm. feel like we're pretty well equipped in the kitchen. Uh, we had to get a new toaster because we had a really nice KitchenAid toaster from our old house, and we plugged it in, and it's like, this thing is 1,800 watts. And so, we had to get a 1,600-watt uh, yeah. toaster, which is a nice little toaster, but it takes a while to toast it. Just a bagel or something. <laughs> but I mean, the Nutribullet works fine yeah. and the Instant Pot draws hardly anything. Yeah, hardly anything at all. And you can do a lot of stuff in that Instant Pot. Stove runs off propane. We have five gallons of propane and it's honestly lasted quite a bit because we only have the hot water heater in this that run on propane. So the five gallons has lasted, I think we're on week number three or yeah. four of that propane. So not bad. A lot of people have a lot more storage than that of propane, but I've found that the five gallons works fine for us. It's easy enough to switch them in and out of the gas station or something. Since we've been on the road, we really have been trying to cook our own food and use our own everything instead of going out and paying for a meal or doing something like that. So keep our fridge stocked and... Ethan's a really good cook, really good cook. too. <laughs> so that helps. <laughs> I like cooking, skills, but... but he doesn't think I'm as good as he is. <laughs> So these are little magnetic spices, spice rack deals that we found on Amazon and they stick right to the fridge and they actually don't fall off while yeah, we're driving. We haven't had one fall off yeah. while driving. And you just uh, give them a twist and a turn to pour your spices out and close it up and they're, up, they're on there. You just have a little bread basket with uh, the quick things that we snack on all the time. Mm -hmm. And then we've got this apartment size fridge, which is a... Uh, it's an Avanti. <laughs> so it's Energy Star rated. And uh, I read on a bunch of blogs to try to find a good fridge to run on solar because we didn't want to have to get a propane fridge or anything like that. Um, so we found this one. And I mean, it gets so cold that stuff starts to freeze in our refrigerator portion. Yeah. And it runs off solar great we haven't had any issues with it mm -hmm. so we really like it plenty of food storage and the freezer is decently sized the only thing i wish was different about it i wish it had locks like a real rv fridge yeah. because we've lost the contents of the fridge once or twice yeah we had a whole <laughs> tequila bottle fly out of the freezer and break on the floor yeah. so we make sure driving. you have some sort of lock or something that while yeah. you're driving it's now we don't secured. store any bottles in the, bottles freezer. In the freezer yeah it was a downer i mean you can't stop you can't just slam on the brakes and then it really goes everywhere so so yeah <laughs> i usually play clean up while we're driving if yeah. anything happens <laughs> so these have all of our pots and pans over here and then in here we keep our dishes that we use some paper plates and the bowls and stuff um and then down here is our mugs and the utensils for the Nutribullet and all the other stuff that we have down there. We realized that we brought way, we too, brought many way too many dishes things. with us. We have like, what, maybe 12 different types of cups and we really only need two. Yeah. <laughs> I recommend just two sets of everything or four sets of everything. Yeah. Just simple, simple, simple. Because. The more yeah, you have, yeah. the more it rattles around and, and the, the more, more you space have to wash it the dishes and <laughs> yeah, just a few things is all you need. Yeah, we learned that as soon as we did our first little trip, we, uh, we went like two and a half weeks on our first little trip and came back home. We we're like, man, we need to ditch some stuff. So we got rid of a lot of stuff out yeah. of this bus, <laughs> a lot of stuff. So basically all it, it, uh, it's a kit that 
they ship it to you from stone coat countertops and you mix them together and you pour the resin out on top of it and then you do your spray paint lines through it and you can make it whatever color you want we chose silver rose gold and white mm -hmm. and so we painted our mdf white on the bottom poured the epoxy onto it and started hitting the spray paint into it and then you hit the spray paint with isopropyl alcohol and it spreads it all out and gives it that depth that marble has to it and a lot of the people that walked in at the bus fair was like whoa you guys have marble in here and I was like no it's just MDF resin and so yeah I wish we would have hit up stone coat countertops for like a little yeah it's yeah. just a piece of plywood that we painted white and then poured the epoxy on the top of and it's uh, heat resistant you can cut on it we take our cast iron pan right off the burner onto this and it's all good to go. $200 for both countertops, said and done. Which I mean probably the I mean for mica would probably be about the same like laminate countertops. Yeah. And this is way more durable. Way more durable. And prettier. <laughs> yeah and you can make it however however you want it. Yeah. We have like little sparkles in it that you'll see. I mean it's it's pretty cool. I let and her go a little wild on it but. <laughs> and we're not artistic people so. Yeah so this turned out super yeah. good for us. So this is all uh, just pine paneling that we bought from Lowe's. It comes in a little pack. It's quarter inch by four inch or something like that. And uh, it went up super easy. The only thing is it warps a little bit, but I guess that's some of the character that the bus has to it. Yeah, we installed it in the middle of winter when it was raining. So the wood, you know, held some of the moisture. And now that we're in dry heat, it started shrinking up a little bit. So we have some little gaps here and there, but it adds to the character. Yeah. And then these are just a one by one by eight or a one by ten that I got from Lowe's and we stained it. Um, but I used that to cover up that last little bit of the curve that happened in the you know, on the roof of the bus because these boards are really hard to make the last little portion of the curve. So that was a nice way to cover it up and it looks pretty good too. And I hid all my electrical behind it. So I was able to run you know, electrical from front to back behind these things, which is easy to access if something ever went wrong, I guess. So all these I ran, these are all 12 volt uh, LED lights that are all on a few different switches. And then all the 110 power I ran myself, I have five different breakers for that. So we have our fridge on one, our washer dryer on its own, and then the rest of the plugs are all kind of connected. But we wanted to keep the fridge separate and we have a GFI circuit next to our sinks, which is good to have. Yep, this is a shiplap that we bought from Lowe's as well and we stained it. Um, but yeah, that was a really nice way to fill in a wall and it's a really cool accent wall. Uh, we bought the trim and just put the trim around it. This is wood trim in a pretty cool way. I was able to make this work because I bought a lot of pieces of trim and I was trying to make the curve and it broke every time. So I ended up putting this in a hot tub and soaking the trim in a hot tub for like five, 10 minutes and it got bendable. And then you just bend it up there and tack it on with a little nail gun and it's perfect, it makes the curve. Yep, Escape Pact here, we've just been using this for our stickers pretty much. We don't really ever go out this one, but it is a nice way to vent the bus as we're driving. Mm -hmm. But and back, easy access to the solar panels. Yeah, easy access to the solar panels. The solar panels are all, all, all up front. So we have uh, 520 watt uh, sticky panels actually. So they just stick down right to the top of the bus. Super easy to install. They've worked great so far. So we've got the North Star lead carbon batteries. Uh, they're 170 amp hours each and we run two of those. And it seems like we're one of the smallest battery banks of the bus crew so far. but. It lasts us fine and our solar charges it up great and I guess we just don't have that much power draw. Works really well for us. And I ran just all the wires down. They came through this emergency hatch and went down the edge and then down the bottom out to the outside storage bins where my batteries are and my inverter is and all that stuff. Yeah, so we, when we tore the roof off, we did spray foam insulation. We bought the kit online and uh, did it ourselves. Just you really have to make sure that those tanks are at least 75 degrees because if they change temperature at all, it stops. It stops. You start spraying, and then it just starts coming yeah, off of the ceiling, like form up and it gets all sticky, and it won't expand. So we when we were spraying it, it, we we ran into that problem, and we had to bring a space heater into the bus, put the tanks right in front of the space heater to warm them up, and kept spraying it. And then some of the spray foam got into the space heater and kind of caught the space heater on fire. Yeah, so we had to move that out of the bus real quick mm -hmm. and just finish it really fast before yeah. they, the tanks cooled down again. Yeah, so I recommend doing that in somewhat heat because we did it in like, what, December? We did it on January. Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah. And it, uh, 
there's a, a there's some spots that <laughs> didn't necessarily turn out well but i guess that's part of doing it yourself <laughs> yeah so we got insulation on the roof and on the sides when we tore off the aluminum siding on this or whatever it is on the sides we uh did spray foam in the walls as well yeah, and then so underneath the floor, floor we have a inch and a half of subfloor that we did the styrofoam insulation on the bottom of it and so that's been really nice because you can i think you can tell the difference mm -hmm. from the floor yeah. i like the kitchen area yeah. i've seen a few of those buses that kind of have the kitchen that does the corner here yeah, and it comes out in like an island or something i feel like those would have gave us you know doing a layout like that would have gave us a little bit more room as far as like entertaining area but but it functions cool. well functions for the well. two of us one thing I'd really recommend is making sure you have a true layout for your plumbing before you start doing a flooring, before you start doing your cabinets, before you start doing anything because we put our cabinets in here saying, yeah, that's where we want this to go. We want our sink here. We want this over here. And then it's like, you got to drill all the holes for your plumbing. And turns out my gas tank is directly underneath this whole unit here so I couldn't run the plumbing straight down it has to go down and way over past the gas tank and then down out the bottom of the bus but just lay out your plumbing from yeah. when you start our think. plumbing is definitely spread out yeah. which probably added to cost and headache lots and of frustration headache. lots and lots of headache <laughs> so I feel like if you have a system that's closer together you're gonna run less you know piping and it'll probably be a lot simpler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But just having a, a plan before you do all that, because those are things that really, I mean, it takes a lot of work to drill a hole for mm -hmm. the plumbing and, and do all that stuff and route it past all the weird things that these bottom of these buses have. Yeah. So, so this is our bathroom. Uh, we have a shower and then a nature's head composting toilet. Um, we did the toilet above the wheel well. So it's kind of tight and you have to shimmy up onto the toilet a little bit. Um, but luckily we're small people, so it works well for us. Um, we just did some sticky vinyl tiles in here to add a little bit of fun to the floor. Um, and then in the shower here, we have the corrugated metal um, walls for the shower. And then we just got a standard shower pan that you would put in a house. I think it's 32 by 32 um, inches, so it's pretty big. Um, and then for our shower head, we have a rain shower head and also a handheld shower. Um, and then we also have the emergency hatch right on the side of the shower. So if we're dirty or if the dogs are dirty, we can just open up the emergency hatch, you know, throw the dogs in the shower and rinse them off instead of having to come all the way through the bus for that. Um, and we did cedar, it's actually cedar closet lining um, that we got from Lowe's. So we did that for the ceiling and the walls um, to help with moisture and um, it also smells really good um, and it's cute. So the showers, um, we definitely do quick showers. Um, so like you turn on the water, get wet and then turn it off do all your soap and whatnot, and then do a rinse. Um, so we don't take showers where the water is continuously running, because then we're using a lot of water, using a lot of propane to heat the water. So we keep the showers quick, but um, luckily with the metal and the cedar wood, I feel like it keeps the heat in here. So, you know, when the water's off, you don't get like too cold while you're showering. So it works out. We do shower a little too much. We're trying to get better at that, I guess. Um, but like, we'll probably rinse off every, every other day. And then um, I really like to wash my hair. So I wash my hair probably every third day or so. But I need to quit that because we keep running out of water. <laughs> yeah, there are people that do like the Planet Fitness memberships. Yeah, we definitely won't, this summer want to stay by lakes and creeks and rivers. Um, we have a, a sump pump that we can put like in a natural water source and we have a little hose with a shower head so we can do like outdoor showers. All the last crew of buses that we were with, uh, we actually tossed the little sump pump out in the lake and <laughs> we had a little bus crew shower going on out on the beach. That's pretty cool. It doesn't heat it, it just transfers the water, but I mean, it's better than washing off in the mucky water or something like that. And you actually have a little shower head to 
scrub with, I guess, or whatever. I like our bathroom. We, we did our bathroom position specifically around that door because we're like, man, we really want to utilize that door for the dirty dogs and for us being dirty. And so it was kind of a pain to make everything fit around this little space here, but other than that, it's good. I would prefer to have the toilet a little bit lower, but <laughs> gotta work around those wheel wells. Yeah, Nature's yeah. Head is awesome. We were scared to use it at first, but it is awesome. And then hearing everybody else's opinion on it at the bus fair was hilarious, and yeah. it's great. Emptying the pee jug is a little disgusting, yeah. but not as gross as having a black tank, in my opinion. I mean, <laughs> you just have to go out and dump your pee every couple days. Um, but that's better than having to dump a black tank every so often. Yeah, but the, uh, the compost section of the toilet, mm -hmm. it lasts, nature's head says like 60 or 70 uses, something mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, I mean, that'll, that'll last we've us been, about two months. Yeah, we've been using it, what, like three weeks now, four weeks? Three or four weeks. And it doesn't smell, it doesn't like look weird. So yeah, we're, we're awesome. pretty happy with it. Yeah. Super stoked on that. We, we wanted to do a barn door here so we could have some privacy in the bathroom, but also not have a door that swings out and takes up a bunch of space. So we found this hanger here. It is a, it's meant for like closet TV doors. Like if you have a hidden TV or something, you put little closet doors on it and they, they shut closed. And, uh, but luckily this door is really not that heavy. So it worked perfect for the bus. It pops it right off the, um, the wall just enough space and uh, we built this door out of the leftover paneling that we had from the roof uh, just kind of put it together really quick and it works good slides and it locks in place while we're on the road pop it into the corner there and it locks in place and doesn't go anywhere so ended up working really nice so this is my little vanity area um, I really wanted to have this I didn't want to have to wash my face and brush my teeth over the kitchen sink. Um, so we found this little unit on Amazon. It included the sink, the cabinet, and the faucet. Um, so we just built it into the little wall cubby right here, um, and it works perfectly. Um, I've got a little mirror right here, and I did some mandala stenciling, and then um, some little peel and stick tiles here, just to make it feel a little more homey and like a real bathroom vanity and I've got my curling iron and straightener and blow dryer in there and I've got an outlet right here so it's the perfect little getting ready space so our little pantry area um, we just built it up in here um, we've got enough room for everything it's a little small but we utilize like some little bins and stuff to keep spices together um, We've got a tension rod here to help when we're going down the road. It helps keep um, some of the bigger items in. I use these little pop-up containers for dry storage and they work really well and I like that they're see-through so you can see everything in there. Huh. Yeah, I kind of wish we had a door on the pantry or like, you know, yeah. some, sort of, some sort of doors or maybe a drawer because it's kind of messy when you just look at it. Um, that it works and we don't feel like building anything more <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, and then under here, um, it's a little messy, but we have a three drawer um, little plastic storage bin and that has um, some of my clothes in it. And then some toiletry items are down here. Um, we've got our extra paper bags and whatnot for the grocery store. Um, and then on the other side is our closet. So we've got hanging space for all of our clothes. We have another um, bigger three drawer organizer that has some of Ethan's clothes in it. Um, so we're still trying to get rid of some clothes because we thought that this area would be enough, but it still feels pretty cramped. But we have everything we need and um, it's really convenient because it's right across from the washer dryer combo. So when we do laundry, we can just kind of go from the dryer and then hang up the clothes right here. A washer dryer combo was kind of a non-negotiable for me. Um, we have two dogs and one of them slobbers a lot. So I really wanted something to be able to clean our clothes and not have to go to a laundromat all the time. So we ended up getting a Magic Chef washer dryer combo 
It's ventless, so it doesn't get hot. It just air dries the clothes. So usually we'll run the dry cycle for a little bit and then we'll hang up the clothes to finish drying. Um, but we picked it up at Home Depot for, we got it on sale for about 600 bucks. So I feel like that was totally worth it to have a washing machine on the bus. Uh, we use it really when we're plugged in. It uses nine gallons of water, which is kind of a bit. I didn't realize it used that much mm -hmm. at first, but uh, yeah, it seems like every, every couple of weeks or so we're maybe ready to plug in somewhere to get some water or do something or so it, it works out to every few weeks that we can plug in and use it and yeah so yeah we mostly use it when we're plugged into shore water and power we can use it when we're off grid it just sucks up a lot of water <laughs> but it's really nice to have and then we don't have to lug all of our clothes to a laundromat because I'm sure finding parking spots in a laundromat for the bus is not easy. <laughs> uh, we've got our hot water heater in the wall over here. Um, so it just, we ended up putting right here in the wall. It's a ventless Excel water heater that we got on Amazon and it seems to work great. We haven't had any issues with it yet. It hasn't burnt the wall down and uh, yeah. Yeah, it runs off of propane, off of propane. and it's, um, as soon as you turn the, the hot water handle on the faucet, it um, ignites and it immediately gets the water hot. So basically the time it takes to run the water from this unit to the faucet is the time it takes for hot water. So yeah. it's really, really quick and we really like it. Mm -hmm. Works really good. And being ventless, I didn't have to cut any holes or do a big old, you know, vent out the top of the bus or out the side or put it somewhere different. But Sometimes the wall does get a little it's hot. A little warm, but. <laughs> so like if he, is taking a shower or washing dishes for a long time. I usually come back here and just like put my hand on the wall to make sure that it's not too hot. I'm gonna burn us down. But we have a we have a smoke detector and a, a CO2 alarm. So if anything happens, hopefully that'll tell us that something's happening. Yeah. <laughs> and back here past that, we have uh, the sleeping puppy, puppy dog storage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have just, uh, we keep our dirty laundry bin there. And then we have our shoe storage over here underneath the bed. And then this step actually serves as our diesel heater. We have uh, our diesel heater that we'll, we use when we're off grid. It um, works really, really well. It gets this place way too hot. Um, yeah, it's we got it on Amazon again. and. Mm -hmm. uh, works great super yeah, easy to you, install you and just click it on the pump starts running and there's a little a hose that kind of vents the hot air out here and I mean within 10 minutes it's warm enough in here we yeah, were totally. we were in Lake Tahoe and it was it's probably like 30 degrees outside mm -hmm. which it means it was probably 30 degrees in the bus too and uh we kicked it on. We threw a little thermal curtain up right here to hold the heat in the bedroom area while we slept. And we had to run it for like maybe 20 minutes before yeah. we went to bed. Mm -hmm. And then we woke up around three or four, turned it on for another 10 minutes and it keeps it super warm, yeah. super efficient too. Really, really it efficient. uses hardly any diesel. We put two liters of diesel in this little tank that it comes with. And I mean, we haven't ran it out yet and we've yeah. been on the road using it decently you have been using it for uh about a month and a half now yeah yeah but it comes with a little lcd screen so she can sleep with it on her side of the bed and basically just roll over and click the button and turn it on and mm -hmm. go back to sleep for a minute but yeah it works really well i'm i'm happy with it i'm really happy with it yeah master bedroom uh we have our pump for our or our switch for our water pump is back here because all of my water tanks are underneath my bed uh we have the 50 gallons of water underneath the bed, and then we have uh, storage all around that. So basically the whole garage area can hold the rest of our junk that we have. Um, but yeah, we kept our king size mattress from home uh, and we made it fit. It was a pain getting it in here, but we made it fit and it is nice to have that little yeah. last thing that we had from home. And we actually sleep on it the short way because we're short. So mm -hmm. our feet come to like right here. And then we have more room for the dogs because the dogs usually come up and sleep with us at night. Yeah. I like the the bohemian kind of um, style. So I got this mandala um, duvet cover, which is really nice because when it gets dirty, you can just take the duvet out of it and it fits in our washing machine. Um, so that way we're not having to try to wash a big 
comforter. It's basically just two sheets sewn together. So right. I really like that to keep it Way clean. <laughs> well, we did all the all the different lights in here. We got some reading lights and uh, our big lights here for getting dressed. But yeah, that about, about completes the bedroom. I really like the how much space we have oh, back yeah, here because nice um, you have a lot of elbow room and it really feels like a a bedroom. It doesn't feel like it's just a bed built into the back. Yeah. Um, so I really like the the bedroom aspect of it. Mm -hmm. We continued the shiplap on this side of the wall. Mm -hmm. Same shiplap that's out there, but. I, just something uh, to tie it in a little bit. I'm a big fan of Joanna Gaines and Fixer Upper, so <laughs> I had to have some sort of chip lap that. in here. <laughs> Fixer Upper inspiration, yeah. Yeah. So we uh, we sewed these, she sewed these curtains herself, and uh, we just put them up on a little curtain rod, and those work really well for being back here. We yeah. tinted the windows, um, so they're all tinted, and nobody can really see in, but the curtains are just nice for extra extra privacy and they actually keep a little bit of warmth in yeah. sometimes. We don't have curtains for every single window yet, um, so we keep most of them in the back bedroom and the, um, the bathroom. But when I sew all of these curtains, they're just um, leftovers of big curtains and I just cut them down and hemmed up the bottoms um, so we could reuse some of the curtains that we had in our our regular house. Uh, one thing I wish I would have done is actually put the beds, the bed on like one of those hydraulic lift deals, you know, so it pops up and you can reach underneath the bed and get all your storage there because I load my motorcycle on the back and I can't access the rear door until I take the motorcycle off. So in places where we're just parked for a day or so and I don't unload the motorcycle, I do have a trouble getting into the storage back there. So mm -hmm. it would be nice to be able to pop this up and get under there. We added this little step here. This is nice because we use that to get out of our roof hatch here and go up onto our rooftop deck. So it's a cool little easy step to pop you right out without having to do a big old ladder or climbing on a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So this is my rooftop deck that we built. Um, I was really wanting to do one forever but scared because I couldn't figure out how to do it and I had seen so many different versions of how they were built. But I found a guy, I forget his name, but he had a, a shorty and he posted it all over Pinterest and he had a deck exactly the way I built mine and so I copied his idea and basically it's just two by fours that go down the middle that are drilled to all the ribs of the bus and then uh, I did a two by six standing up on each edge uh, with some, attic uh, some metal brackets that I bolted those all down to the frame as well and then I did cedar one by sixes on top of them that are all tongue and groove and makes for a really nice little sun deck. We had like 10 people up here so it's pretty sturdy and uh, it's not going anywhere. But yeah, off the back of it we have our motorcycle deck and the little ladder that goes off the back of that too. But mm -hmm. it worked out really well. It was eight hours and one trip to the hardware store. This is our back porch slash motorcycle deck. Uh, it was a big necessity because I wanted to take the bike with us and have a little get around vehicle while we're parked and wanted to go into town or go get some groceries or something without hauling the bus down there. Um, it took a little bit of engineering and uh, welding to do, but so I slid the nine inch C channel into the original frame of the bus, did a big old weld around all of that and then bolted that to the seat to the frame. And then on the outside edges of it, I built myself, uh, I welded a little uh, two by two square brace so it would take some of the pressure off the outside edges and then did some angled supports underneath it as well. So that deck is really, really sturdy and not gonna go anywhere. Um, it wasn't that hard to do, you just gotta have a welder and some time. But yeah, we put the two by six planks on top of it and treated them and uh, we used a little ramp to get the motorcycle on and off and it works out really well. I can almost do it by myself and she helps me most of the time, but the bike is perfect to have. Sometimes it gets a little sketchy when you're loading the bike, um, but we try to find spots where the, the tires can go into a lower point so that the deck is closer to the ground because um, then it makes it easier to load it. But um, we can we can do it just the two of us so yep. it works out we had a cruiser before it was a, a vulcan 750 street cruiser and it was a great bike but we loaded it on the back of the deck twice and we were like that's not going to work anymore that's way too big of a bike so got rid of that thing and bought this one and it's a third the weight and go twice as fun, twice as fun and yeah. you can go a billion places on it you can go wherever the back door when the motorcycle is off you can open up the back door and it has all of the garage space under there and so i've got my toolbox and i've got all of our extra 
little trinkets and gear and so, backpacking stuff and all of our little tables and every, pretty much everything that we don't use while we're inside the bus but we're going to use while we're parked. And there's still a lot of space back there's there. There's still too, a ton of space. So. I built a lot of storage back there. Yeah. So we have more than enough storage which is really great. Yeah, plenty of storage. but. You could also do some storage underneath the deck as well. I, w I have one of those tool bed or the tool uh, truck bed toolbox deals that I wanted to put on the side of the bus so I could have some extra storage, but I, have, I haven't needed it yet, so it's pretty nice. We use the side hatches on the bus that have a little bit of storage. I put my batteries in one of them and our spare tire goes in the other one. So We ended up doing the house door because the accordion door that was on the bus, uh, when you opened it, it opened and worked fine, but it was so little space to squeeze in through. And when we were hauling all the wood and all the tools up into the bus, it just got really irritating to squeeze in and out of that little door. So we got rid of this thing, or got rid of the accordion door and put this one on it. And honestly, this was one of the easiest things that we installed on the bus. It took us 45 minutes after getting home from the hardware store and the door was in, it works, it doesn't squeak. It works perfect. So. I really liked the idea of having a house door. I just really like the look of them. Um, and I, I think this is actually the same door that we put in our house that we remodeled. Yeah. Um, so I knew that I liked the door. Um, taking out the, the old school bus door was pretty difficult because that thing weighed, it did weigh what, a at least 100 pounds. Yeah. And um, just a big and, awkward piece of glass. And it was just the two of us taking it out. So I definitely got a workout taking out the old door. Um, but Ethan just put a two by three on one side and we fit the door in perfectly. We didn't have to use any shims or anything. Um, and it was perfectly level and square. We cut um, six inches off the bottom of it. And that was about it. Yeah. And I like it. It's nice for um, loading up the dogs because now they have more, um, you know, area to get in and out because they're pretty big. <laughs> and you actually have a deadbolt. Yep. So the deadbolt's dead nice. Bolt. I mean, they can break the window, but I guess it keeps the honest people honest. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the captain's area. <laughs> We've got uh, just your standard controls. They're all pretty basic because it's a little bit older bus, but uh, I added an EGT gauge and a uh, Attitude adjuster by attitude performance, which uh, gives me a lot more horsepower and I'm able to make it up the hills a lot faster I've got all my controls for all my lights over here. We left them pretty original. I added my light bar and a couple of pod lights But other than that everything else still works and still is the old-school bus function uh, I do most of it, but we actually swap off on a decent road and she'll hop in here and start driving some so I can relax and chill out for a minute it's probably about, you do 80% yeah, and I do 20% 20. of the driving. Yeah. Uh, what, we did like six hours, something like that? Mm -hmm. I think we did six hours at one time. That was quite a bit. The dogs don't like it that much. Gas mileage, uh, we do about 10 miles a gallon. And we have, I think, a 50 gallon tank, 55 gallon tank, something like that. So up here we have our sound bar that we use for our music as we're driving down the road. But other than that, it's just a little bit of book storage and uh, other little quick trinkets and stuff like that that we have that we need. We blast the fans, but they are pretty loud, so we have a little swamp cooler in the back that works pretty well, but the fans get loud while we're driving. We can't hear each other. <laughs> but other than that, the front is pretty basic, and we didn't really do a whole lot to it. Yeah, got the dog bowls. Otis loves to ride on the front seat up here. While we're driving down the road, he'll hop up on this and sit and watch out the front and cruise along. It's pretty funny. So we are two pups and us on Instagram and it's just me and her and our two dogs here and this is Otis and this is Ellie. Uh, they've been with us every step of this little adventure that we're on and they're loving it. Otis is an American Bulldog and he is about four years old and Ellie's a blue nosed pit bull and she's about one and a half and uh, throughout the whole build they would come in the bus and start chewing on two by threes and just <laughs> hanging out. Tools. Yeah. So um, we think they really enjoy bus life so we far. They, yes. they like being all the go to all the new spots and check everything out and be off the leash and hang out and have a good time. Well, thank you for guys for checking out our little family and our little mobile bus and uh, check us out on Instagram at two pups and us and give us a follow and check out the rest of our journey. Mm -hmm.